this new to me bandsaw has now been in my workshop for two or three months. It's been here over the summer. We've had quite a hot but wet summer here in the UK. So our doors have been open to the workshop and we've been getting moisture coming in. And this is starting to make my table rust. I'm finding the older machines I've had in here for several years don't seem to be getting affected. Whether it's just because this one's closer to the door, but I also think generally once the machine's been with you six months or a year and you've been putting various finishes on there, which I will talk to you about, or waxes, they tend to build up a little bit more of resistance or resilience to rust anyway. But rust is an ongoing issue we have, or all places have, with anything which is cast iron or a lot of our hand tools as well. If we have a hand plane and it's really perhaps an old one that really has suffered with rust over the years, then a product we can use for that is this one. This we mix up in almost a gallon of water or five litres, pour this into a bucket and we would leave our chisel or our hand plane soaking in there for an hour or so. This will eat into the rust and make it turn black. You can then take it out of the water, wash it off, scrub it off with a brush and it really gets rid of any old uh, rust. But that won't work on a great big machine bed. We can't dip this thing into a bucket of water, so we need to look at something different again. If we have a table which is getting really quite rusty, more than this one is at present, perhaps because we've got a very damp workshop or we're using a lot of green uh, timber which is quite wet on the surface, we can get some quite deep pitted rust uh, happening within uh, our beds. If so, then this rust remover gel is going to be much, much better. What we would need to do is degrease the surface of the bed first, or the hand tool possibly. I'd wear gloves, I'd wear goggles, apply this onto the surface with a soft uh, cloth or a soft scouring uh, pad. Leave it on there probably 10 or 15 minutes and, and work it in, and then we would clean it off with water. This we have used on our lathes after we've been doing green wood turning and perhaps someone's forgotten it or left the shavings on there and you're getting some real rust pitting in there. We want to make sure things like your headstock or your tailstock move nicely along your machine and rust in there is not going to be good. So this is really quite good but probably we don't need it on this bed at the present because it's not a lot of rust, it's just very much on the surface. If we are perhaps going away on holiday for a long time or you are working in a cellar or somewhere which really is quite damp, then you probably, after you've removed any rust, you need to put a good coating on this to really keep that rust out. This product did very well, I believe, in a fine woodworking review, but it's not something that I use very often because we use the machines day in, day out. This product is going to be great for putting on the machines, but it's going to leave a bit of a greasy, oily surface on there. And I don't want to use that when I'm putting my timber on here later on. If I was away for a, a few weeks, perhaps, then this would be great to keep the rust at bay if you had a damp uh, workshop. Another product similar to this is one that we do use quite a bit in the workshop. And this is a Metal Guard Ultra. Again, this has the same kind of effect. It really will keep that rust at bay, but again, it will leave a bit of a film on the surface of your beds or your tools. I tend to use this perhaps more inside of chucks or other bits that might get the rust to them that our timber's not coming in contact with, but it's difficult to keep that rust out of. So again, a very good product for that kind of stuff, but you need to put this on, but wipe it off before you were to be using it uh, for your timber to go on there. This bed's not in really bad condition, so what I would do with this one is use much more readily available WD-40. I'm going to basically use this as a bit of a lubricant, really, just so I can go on here with a scouring pad and clean this little bit of surface rust off. This is great to help when you clean down, but after that, again, I need to wash this off or remove it with a clean cloth and then put something on this surface to give it more longer-term protection. Two products I might perhaps use for that. This is a wax, a rust inhibiting wax that we use, but we tend to use this more perhaps on our hand planes and our smaller products, because this is quite a thick wax and will take quite a bit of buffing to make it really work. Buffing's fine, if you're using a hand plane, you're buffing it all day long using it. But for this one, we'd have to really give it some rubbing or use a mechanical buffing wheel to perhaps really get it laid on. 
So what I'm going to use, slightly different one, this is a Liberon product and it's quite readily available in Europe. I'm not quite sure about it in the US, but I think in the US people will use a Johnson's wax uh, for waxing their tables up and a similar kind of product possibly to this. I think to be honest, any good car wax that you might polish your car with will do a similar kind of job, just trying to seal this steel. And these waxes also make it nice and easy for your timber and your products to glide over. But once these are buffed into the surface, the advantage is they won't then come off on your timbers. What you don't want to use is something which has got silicon in it, because silicon, if that comes off into your timber, it will mean that your glues, your stains and your polishes will not stick. And then you're going to lead a whole load of other problems later on in the process. Always when setting up a workshop, we want to try and make sure it's as dry as environment as possible. So our workshop generally is well constructed. We also have some dehumidifiers, but occasions, I say just like this summer, you may have a problem. What I'm going to do with this surface rust is just use some WD-40 scouring pad and just clean up an area and see how quickly and how clean it'll look. If I had a much bigger area, I may want to use a random orbit sander, an orbital sander to do it. But again, contamination wise, you don't want to ruin your nice bit of kit. I would rather do it by hand, a little bit of elbow grease and throw all these bits away in the bin afterwards. The pad is basically a 3M Scotch-Brite type of pad. And it really won't take long to get into this steel. You could perhaps put onto a block of wood just to really make sure you're getting maximum pressure. Just a quick wipe off and see where we're at. I think already you can see the difference just within a minute or two. So I need to work on the rest of this bed, make sure all of this WD-40 is off and then we'll have a go at buffing some wax on there. I've given the rest of this bed a clean down with the WD-40 and it only took me a couple of minutes. It's quite quick because it was only very, very superficial. I've also just waxed and buffed this uh, three quarters of the bed, which again didn't take me very long at all. I'm just going to do this little final strip down here. This is quite a thin wax. Really quite a fluid that goes on there. I'll just buff it in a little bit, doesn't take an awful lot of buffing, not a lot of elbow grease. But that will just give that a better level of protection. And I might redo this every couple of months. My older machines in exactly the same environment don't seem to have suffered with the same rust over the summer time. And I only think exactly the same place, it's just that we've built up a bit more wax or resilience within the surface. This should be good and what we're going to get now is a really nice gliding surface for our timber to go on and also no rust or residue coming off onto the timber to actually spoil that, which is really our end game that we're trying to achieve.